the, no, look, how do you know? We haven't even done it yet. We know yet. that there are issues. You just said it. We all agree here, I think, that there are issues with Obamacare. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that tie that in into the government shutdown. That's absolutely wrong. You shouldn't. But there are issues with the with Obama. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's true. It's true. I mean, you heard. So I'm like, listen, I'm common sense. But Richard, here's what people don't know. You know this. A whole bunch of Republicans that are willing to go public, let alone the ones behind the scenes, are the same way. What is the logic of the strategy to do this? They got a strong hand. Why do they play this? It's very simple. Those, the Tea Party exists because. People thought the Republican Party was giving too much, that it was not standing on its fiscal principles. So the people that were elected from the Tea Party movement, by the way, which started from Obamacare, but for Obamacare, we wouldn't have this Tea Party movement. These people have to go back to their districts, which are now super conservative districts, that if you vote for Obamacare, you can now be I got all that, but I want to bring the table, and my last question to you is, you're John Boehner today. So they're responsible to the constituents. You're John Boehner today, right? And you make that 40 guys who have um, red, 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 red districts, okay, as conservative as you can get. He still has a whole bunch of other folks, and he's got a job, okay, to try and get Republicans elected, as do other party leaders. At the end of the day, when do they say, we're not letting these guys take us off the cliff, both as a nation and as a party? When does he wake up and say, I don't want to do this anymore? Either guys vote your conscience or don't, and if you're going to vote me out as a consequence, do it, because I'm sick of trying to hurt cats. But he doesn't have to. If his counterparts in the Senate are saying no way, then why does he have to move at all? He it, doesn't. It, 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 it breaks down the does. policy. Does. No, if this is the best they have to change the discussion from why are we holding the nation hostage to why we don't like Obamacare, they're going to lose the fight with the American people. You, you may be right about Obamacare. You may be wrong about Obamacare. That's not the crisis we're facing today. We're facing a crisis where a, a party has been captured by people who don't believe in government. And to them, their rightness is more important than the functionality of the government. These people were elected, the, though, okay? The, so so the, they represent people what, in this country let them go out, whose viewpoints put, are the put same. Put a bill on the Defund floor Obama of the care. House that says whatever you wanted to say and let everybody vote it. But don't put only one bill out there. Put both bills out there. And watch the Democrats come in. There'll be a majority because there'll be enough Republicans. But that, they won't do that. This is the yeah. triumph of a faction over the interests of the people. I'm, you know, I'll, I'll listen to you explain to me what's wrong with Obamacare. I don't agree. But okay, it's an argument worth having. What's not worth having is how you shut the government down and ruin the credit it, rating wait, of the nation. Put, oh, Dominic, no, let me bring it down. But the Dominic, for me, the down. thing is, and the public can get this, Every game we play, you play football on Sundays, you, you play uh, uh, tennis uh, with your, your kid, whatever it is, board games, there's rules to every game. Now, the point that everybody knows the rule in Washington is you have a bill. The bill has got to get voted. If you get enough votes for it, the thing will pass, and the president can or can't veto it. Not only did this happen, but the Supreme Court even got a pass on it, mm -hmm. and everybody okayed it and checked the box. To say now that I don't care what it is, I'm going to basically blackmail you, um, and I'm going to, you know, Not basically. treat you. Yeah, and you're going to treat him as a hostage for this with the nation's fiscal health. To say that, I believe, is the dumbest political move because the public can see that. You can't change the rules in the middle of a game just because you didn't like how the score ended up. Agreed. But these members of Congress don't care. One thing that Richard said that's true, that I do agree with, that we have to take into consideration, they weren't elected by themselves. These are people in certain districts, Richard, that they believe that we're all wrong, that the only way we can solve government is to cut, okay, but, cut, but here's cut. Problem. Here's the problem. Where are they going to go? If Boehner and the rest said, no longer are we going to let these guys hold us hostage, you think they're going to vote Democrat? But, but Boehner's no not going to do that. He's already shown, Boehner so has already shown he's going to go along and get, get along. If you take Boehner out, you think you're going to get a uh, Republican who's going to be like, okay, listen, uh, I'm going to be, you know, so moderate, I'm going to govern with the Democrats. You think you're going to get but that? don't no, you guys want to win? Boehner's your rather, best bet at this point Just think about this. We'll talk about this later. Do you really want Hillary as your president in 2016? Wouldn't you like to have a Republican Senate? And Andrew, idea. that to me, if positioned, Listen, the best thing if you're a Democrat is that these lunatics actually follow through on their threat. Mm -hmm. It's not the best thing for an American, mm -hmm. but the best thing for a Democrat is you finally got a chance to take the House back and you'll keep the Senate. 
and you probably got a good chance in 2016 even better than you do now. But that said, as an American, this is terrible. You heard the congressman say it. Even if they don't follow through, it's causing harm today, and every day thereafter it gets worse. I, I think somebody's got to call their bluff, and nobody's done it yet. Here, here's the difficulty. There's a pol potential political upside for the Republicans to do this because it plays well in their districts. There's a potential political upside for the president to do this because it might actually lead to him winning the House and being able to get part of his agenda through. The only problem is that both parties are playing chicken with a loaded gun. And this may be the wrong segment to talk about loaded guns, but they're playing chicken with a loaded gun, and the victim in all this could very well be the American economy. But, but how is the president yeah. playing what, chicken? What can he do? What's he supposed I mean, to do? How is the president at this right. point? No, absolutely, so absolutely, absolutely he's not. He's not playing he's, chicken. He has no hand to play. No, no, he's not. He doesn't want to play let's make a deal the way that he has every time we've come to these deadline games in the past because he has very little political downside in doing yeah. so and a lot of upside in doing so because he could win the House back and actually be able to get some of his agenda through. But, Richard, the, just, just intellectually... I have other quotes that I didn't have time for. They're comparing their movement to Rosa Parks. Another person compared the speaker to Jesus Christ, and we can't crucify him. You have the lunatics running the asylum right now. And no matter what gains, I remember these guys talking. Think of Albany. The darkest days were the Espadas and the Montserrats of the world would hold it hostage every time they'd engineer a coup, depending on the week. We're better than that as a state, and we're better than this as a country, and the Republicans are better than this as a party. At some point, they have to say, country first. You know, I, I don't want to lie down with the likes of Ted Cruz. I mean, you're better as a party than this. I mean, it, listen, since the beginning, since the founding of this country, you know, certainly there have been strong debates, one of them being slavery, uh, the other being civil rights legislation, 1864, and a number of other things. Uh, Charles Sumner, uh, a senator, was beat as a, as a senator uh, because of this uh, because of visceral arguments. So there's always been visceral arguments on, 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 on sides of issues, and this, this is one of them. The thing we need to talk about also is we're talking about raising the debt ceiling. How are we talking about raising the debt ceiling without spent controlling and curbing our spending? I think respect, those are very tight issues. Nobody has any credibility in the subject when they already spent the money, and unlike everybody else, just like the congressman said, you can't spend money and then say later on, I don't want to pay. I mean, that's called theft, okay? And that's also called fraud. And that's, reasonable. And that's what basically we've gotten to the point right now. We can't even have a conversation in this country without some people, arsonists, political arsonists, threaten to burn it all down if they don't get their way. Uh, you know, and, and there is a credibility. Don't, i got to hit a break here. Don't make it into a personality disorder. They think the government's the enemy. Shutting it down is not a a bad thing. It's a good thing. They really do Once believe that. Once you have that right. idea. But that doesn't excuse John Boehner and other I'm not excusing anybody. I'm trying to say, don't make them, there are some crazy people there, but the bulk of the people who are doing the wrong thing are doing it for ideological purposes, not for mental health They're reasons. They're mm. principle. We're spending way too right. much money. We'll keep this debate going. But on the other side of the break here, we're going to be talking about our next subject. And a reminder, please, as always, be part of our program. Go online, go to Facebook and Twitter, sound off. Will the GOP really shut down the government? It's all said and good, done. Andrew's analogy of a game of chicken here. Who blinks first? When we come up uh, after the break here, we will shift the subject of guns in America. And Sunday marked President Obama's fifth address following a mass shooting, and he's clearly fed up. We'll tell you not only what he had to say, but also Andrew went up to the Newtown community, and if there was ever a community that could relate to the tragedy of gun violence, it's there. And we're going to hear from the co-founder and vice president of Newtown Action Alliance, that's straight ahead.